This is part 16 of Angular 2 tutorial. In part 14 of this video series, we discussed one of the structural directives NGF in Angular. In this video, we'll discuss another structural directive NG4. Let's understand the use of this directive with an example. So here is what we want to do. Notice we have a list of employee objects here. Each employee object has got employee code, name, gender, annual salary and date of birth. So we want to display these employee objects in an HTML table like this. Let's see how to achieve this using ng4 structural directive. This is the same project that we've been working with so far in this video series. We want our employee list to be in its own component. So to the employees folder, let's add a new TypeScript file. Let's name it employee list dot component dot ts. Let's click OK. First, let's create our component class. Export. This keyword allows this component to be exported so other components can import and use it if required. Class and then the name of our component class. Let's name our class employee list component. Within this class, let's include this property employees which contains the list of employee objects that we want. Notice at the moment we have set the type of the array as any which allows any type of object to be added to this array. This is not a very good practice because this array is not strongly typed. Now the reason we have used any is because at the moment we don't have a type for our employee object. In a later video, we'll discuss how to create strongly typed arrays. For now, let's include this employee's property within our employee list component class. To make this class an Angular component, we need to decorate it with component decorator. For us to be able to do that, we will have to first import component from Angular core. Let's decorate this class with component decorator. First, let's set selector property. I'm going to set selector to list dash employee. We can use this selector as a directive on an HTML page where we want to use this component. We are going to have the view template for our component in a separate HTML file. So to this employee folder, let's add a new HTML file. I'm going to name it employee list dot component dot HTML. Let's click OK. Now let's associate this HTML page as the view template by using template URL property. So template URL is our employee list dot component dot HTML. Along the same lines, let's encapsulate all the styles that are specific to this employee list component in a separate style sheet. So to the employee folder, let's add a new style sheet and I'm going to name it employee list dot component dot CSS. Now we need to associate this style sheet with our employee list component using style URLs property. Within the view template of our employee component, let's include an HTML table. Notice within the table element we have T head and T body. Within T head we have T edge elements to display these headers on the top code name, gender, annual salary and date of birth. Within T body element, let's include TR and on this TR, I'm going to use ng4 directive. Remember, ng4 is a structural directive. So we need to prefix that with asterisk indicating that it's a structural directive. And then our directive ng4 equals, I'm going to use the let keyword to create a variable. I'm going to name the variable employee. You can name it anything you want of employees. So what is this employees? This is the property that we have within our component class and this property contains an array of employee objects. So this ng4 here is going to loop through each employee object that we have in the employees array. And this variable right here, we call it template input variable and this variable is accessible by this tr element as well as any of its children elements. Within this tr, I'm going to include td elements. Now we are going to use this td elements to display employee code, name, gender, annual salary and date of birth. So I'm going to use interpolation here. 
we have the template input variable employee. So as we are looping through each employee object, we want to retrieve their code. And similarly, we also want to retrieve their name, gender, annual salary, and date of birth. So let's do the same thing with the rest of the properties of the employee object. And then we are going to use this selector right here, list employee, as a directive within our root component. So within app.component.ts, within the inline view template of this root component, let's use that list employee selector as a directive. With all these changes in place, let's run our application by pressing Ctrl F5. Notice it displays this message, but nothing happens beyond that. So let's launch browser developer tools and investigate what's going on. Look at the error message here. List employee is not a known element. If list employee is an Angular component, then verify that it is part of this module. So basically, we have to make our employee list component part of our Angular module. At the moment, we only have one Angular module within our application, that is the root module, app.module.ts. So within this module, just like how we have imported app component and employee component, we also have to import our employee list component. And then we will have to include this employee list component within the declarations array, just like how we have included app component and employee component. So let's save these changes and reload our web page. Notice now we see the list of employees as expected, but at the moment this table is not styled. So within our style sheet, that is employee list.component.css. Let's include styles for table, td, and th elements. Let's save these changes and reload this page. Notice now the table is styled as expected. Now let's comment all these employee objects within the array. Let's save our changes and reload this web page one more time. Notice it just displays the header because we don't have any employee objects within the array. When we don't have any employee objects, along with the header, we also want to display a message in the table saying no employees to display. So to achieve this, I'm going to use ngf structural directive. So within our view template, let's include another tr element. And on this tr element, I'm going to use our structural directive ngf equals and then we specify our conditions. If the employee's property does not exist within our component class or the employee's property exists but the length is zero. That means we don't have any employee objects within that array. In both these cases, within the TD element, we want to display this message. No employees to display. Keep in mind, we have got five TH elements. So let's make this TD to span across five TD elements. So to do that, let's set the call span attribute to 5. Let's save our changes and reload our web page. Notice now we see the message as expected. Now let's uncomment the employee objects, save our changes and reload our web page one more time. Notice now we see the employees back. Now let's remove this employees property altogether. Save our changes one more time and reload this web page one more time. Notice again we see the message, no employees to display as expected. And here is that code to achieve it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.